we are calling on officials to do a sweep and shut them down. A PETA associate said that about meat markets in a marginalized section of India. But when privileged groups do the same thing, they ask nicely. We will get to all of that very soon, but first consider this quote. Quote, the question is not can they reason, nor can they talk, but can they suffer? Why should the law refuse its protection to any sentient being? Unquote. This is a quote from the English philosopher Jeremy Bentham and it perfectly summarizes the vegan position. That is ultimately the goal of animal rights, that all sentient animals be given legal protection according to their needs. Currently, however, such protection is not offered to all sentient animals. Some animals, the animals whom we exploit for our food, are excluded from such legal protection. Vegans usually understand that this makes absolutely no sense. However, the Indian branch of perhaps the most famous animal rights organization, PETA, doesn't seem to understand this. A couple of months ago, PETA released videos of meat markets in northeastern India, which is a marginalized section of India. Now, if it matters to you, I'm northeast Indian too. Specifically, I'm Assamese. And before I discuss anything further, let me be very clear here that I'm not saying that Northeastern people should be given a free pass to participate in animal exploitation just because there is marginalization of Northeastern people within India. In fact, I've dedicated entire YouTube videos on explaining why I take the opposite stance and advocate for all demographic groups to be held to the same moral standard. But that's the key part here equal moral standard. Just as it is the case that marginalized groups should not be held to a lower moral standard, they should also not be held to a higher level of scrutiny for doing the same thing as privileged groups of human beings are doing. But holding a marginalized group to a higher level of scrutiny for doing the same thing is exactly what PETA India is doing here. As reported by the Times of India, Yes, that's the name of the newspaper. I know. Don't ask. Anyway, as reported by the Times of India, Pita India Advocacy Associate Pradeep Ranjan Dole Burman remarked, quote, Filthy illegal meat markets torture animals and act as petri dishes. We are calling on officials to do a sweep and shut them down for everyone's sake. Unquote. So this is how Pita India reacts when people who are mostly lower class and belong to a marginalized ethnic group participate in meat production. They, they say it is filthy. They use words like torture to describe what's going on. They call for legal action against these disadvantaged people. Okay, okay. This wouldn't be so much of a problem if they reacted in the exact same manner when upper class people from privileged ethnic groups did the same thing. So do they? No. When Peter had to challenge the multi-billion dollar dairy company Amul, they asked nicely. How nice of them. Okay, hear this. Peter India's vegan outreach coordinator says that Peter had simply, quote, informed Amul about the rising interest in vegan foods and the lucrative opportunity plant milk provides, unquote. Uh, how nice. Pija India's vegan outreach coordinator, whose name is Kiran Ahuja, also said, quote, We approached Amul to consider a shift towards plant-based milk. Consider a shift. Just look at the tone here. This right here is a problem. When you viciously attack disadvantaged people who are disadvantaged because of their class and also their ethnic group for participating in meat production, but when you're talking to multi-billion dollar companies who participate in dairy production, which is much worse, you talk to them as if they are the reincarnation of some deity. That is a problem. Given that Pita India has this huge difference in reaction, I can't help but suspect that their concern has less to do with animal rights and has more to do with using the genuine suffering of non-human animals 
which none of us can even imagine, by the way, using that to further marginalize an already marginalized group. I can't help but suspect that. Further, by having this difference in reaction, is Peter not implying that the lives of these wild animals are somehow worth so much more than the lives of farmed animals? Come on, that is speciesism. How is an animal rights group participating and propagating speciesism to this extent? I cannot take PETA seriously anymore unless they're willing to rectify this. If someone from PETA India is watching this video and you would like to have a civil conversation with a vegan, then I invite you onto my channel or to your platform, wherever you think it would be most beneficial. To everyone else who is watching, if you want to help me out, you can send this video to PETA. You can tweet it out to them, you can email them, you can send it to them via Facebook and so on. Another way that you can help me, by the way, is by subscribing to the channel and liking this video. Anyway, moving on to the sort of next section of this video. As far as I can tell, this is what <laughs> woke people would refer to as white veganism. And they'd say something like, you don't have to be white to participate and propagate white veganism. It is sort of their way of saying that this is bad. And sure, as I've explained, I do agree that this is bad, but I have a few problems with that tactic. The first problem I have with the sort of wokeness crowd is that they will lump this, like seriously unethical things like this, together with genuine animal rights advocacy. They will lump this together in with things like holding different ethnic groups and different demographic groups to the same moral standard regarding animal rights. They will lump this in together with uh, comparing human suffering and animal suffering, which is a perfectly valid thing to do, and so on. Secondly, I don't quite understand why this has to be called white veganism. Because, uh, firstly, it sort of implies, this phrasing sort of implies that this thing is a sort of subset of veganism, which it is not. Like, this behavior has nothing to do with the fact that the people at PETA India are vegans. It has everything to do with the fact that they are, to put it mildly, not the brightest people in the world. Uh, another point, like, there was no white person involved here, right? And I know you can say you don't have to be white in order to participate and propagate white veganism, but I just don't quite understand why we need to use that phraseology. Why do we need to use the word white in there anyway? Doesn't seem to be that great of an idea when you're potentially right, alienating a lot of people. I don't understand why present day whites have to be vilified for what their ancestors did. Also, the, the fact that there are Eastern European people who are still considered whites, right? But their ancestors didn't even participate in the uh, colonization and enslavement of other parts of the world. So they are being vilified, not for things they have done, not for things that their ancestors did, but for things that not even their ancestors did but the ancestors of the people with whom they share skin color did. Doesn't make sense. You know what? I think it's a very sort of American thing to view human beings as this dichotomy of whites and non-whites. No, maybe there's a better term, a better word out there to refer to people who engage in this kind of behavior, who just happen to be vegan. What do you think that word should be? Also, I recently updated the membership levels on my Patreon. So do check that out and let me know what you think of that too. Uh, you can do so by clicking here. And this is the video YouTube thinks you like the best. And I'll see you in the next one. Do be sure to leave a comment with your thoughts.